G'day guys, so it's 20 here and welcome back to Mild Mountain. Last episode I was working on some outer suburbs of Montana, Montana being our big old capital city of the greater region of Marble Mountain, the province that is the map we are working on. And I think that's it for Montana for a few episodes because I would like to get out of the city and start working on some greater region stuff because this series is all about connecting everything up whether it be the capital city or the little suburbs that sit around the side or if it might be a couple of industry that sits in the foothill of Marble Mountain. I need to get out of the city. I'm getting kind of sick of working in the city. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm not sick of working in the city. I could work on it forever but I would like to have a bit of a change for the, at least a few episodes and work on some of the farming areas because we actually are starting to need some industry. We have a medium demand for industry at the moment and we are in negative 57,750. Okay, just changed. But you get the picture. We're losing cash. So let's get the hell out of the city and start working on some farms. All right, we're going to go. We're going to have a lot of farms in this area because it's quite a great area to have some farms. But I'm going to start with some of the farms that are probably going to be the closest to the city. And that's going to be around here. This whole area I plan to have as, I guess, farming region slash suburbs around here. I don't really want it to look like a city or a town. I want it to look like, uh, if anything, an extension from the city. Maybe less than an extension. I might have some sort of small town that sits around here. And it's going to be mostly suburbs. I really don't want the feeling for this area to look like a completely different town or a completely small town. I did want it to still have a little bit of a feel of a city, at least the outskirts of it, because as we get even further out of the city, so places like this and places like that, that's going to have pretty much a very country vibe. So what I'm thinking is, I think I might put, I'm going to fix up this because this isn't perfect. And what I'm thinking is, like an interchange somewhere around here. Nothing too crazy, but maybe I will. And then having a bridge that goes around here because I did want some farmland sitting around here too. And at some stage, we're going to get this road going all the way around here, which will then bridge somewhere around there. So there's gonna be a couple of bridges. There's gonna be a few roads snaking around here, which I might work on in the time-lapse too. But I think for today's episode, I think I'm just going to focus on an interchange, some sort of small town, and I might start plopping down some farms. But, you know, I say that every time, and I never get that much done. Oh, why do I have that gross texture? That's a bit better. I need to fix up a lot of this as well. That's a bit better. So if you are new to the series, I am being pretty particular with the types of mods and assets that I am downloading from the workshop. I am not going overboard. I actually have a collection of about a hundred mods and assets, which is tiny. So I am trying to keep the count quite low. I have, however, downloaded a couple more custom assets. The reason why I have done that is because to build a farm, I to build a realistic looking farm at least. I really needed something a little bit more than the farms that the game gives us. These are the farms that the game gives us and they look fine. They look fine. I don't mind them. I really don't. But they are way too small. I can't make a big farming region with farms that look this small. So I have downloaded just a small pack. There's three. I've only got three in there of just some more farmlands that are just enormous. And they're in the same kind of realm of color scheme as the um, farms for the vanilla one. And you can customize them just like you can with the uh, vanilla ones too. So don't go hating too much. I am still trying to play this game as much as possible. 
And the really cool thing is they act as farms too. So I can, they're not just some prop that don't do anything. These actually act as farms. So that's, I better pause the game and start to demolish some of these. That is the idea at least for this episode. Work on an interchange, get some of these farms down here too. And yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. But I'm pretty keen. I am so keen. Not just pretty keen, I am super keen to be working around here. And let's stop talking and start bloody building. Okie dokie, so much like every single time I start building something in City Skylines, I think I'm going to get tons done and say all this stuff that I'm going to build and then I end up only getting a, getting a small fraction of it finished. And today is no exception. I only get done the interchange and the general idea of where I want everything to sit, but I don't plop down any farms as you can probably tell by the thumbnail. I only really get done the interchange that probably one of the first interchanges when you leave the city and that's going to serve uh, what I want pretty much a lot of the power to be coming from this uh, wind turbine farm that's going to sit on the outskirts of the city. I actually only started plopping these down these wind turbines just as a temporary placement basically and then now I'm really liking them and think I might obviously I'm going to delete all the ones that I've already built and I'm going to work on this general mountain that's going to have quite a lot of them situated all the way around this mountain and uh, be pretty much what you see one of the first things you see when you leave the city um, slash enter the city which I really quite like because generally these things do sit on the outskirts of the city but I don't go and build any of that in this episode. I'm going to save that for uh, its own complete episode where we just focus on the uh, the wind turbines for Montana. That's going to be serving uh, not the entire power source because I don't think it could possibly do that, but definitely a big chunk of it. So going into this build, I was um, checking out some locations that had a similar environment to uh, Marble Mountains environment, so a lot of the stuff I am taking ideas from is around San Francisco and Los Angeles and you know I spent quite a lot of time flying around like that general area where like the hillsides are and where the city starts to meet the mountains which is you know all the way around like San Francisco and uh, Los Angeles and I ended up finding this the perfect location um, around the eastern side of San Francisco and I say perfect because it this area actually has wind farms, it has mountains, and it has um, quite a few different highways that are leading towards the desert, which is what's happening in uh, Montana at the moment. So this is a perfect location, and I ended up finding this one spot that I really liked, and which is where I'm taking uh, this interchange idea from. And generally this interchange is going to be serving people accessing probably smaller towns that are around here and also mostly people who are going to uh, the power station too. Uh, I dare say I'll have quite a few farms that sit around here as well but I think the town style will be pretty much just you know a few houses and maybe a shop or a uh, petrol station and that's pretty much it. They're going to be quite small. Uh, the more major town that is going to sit around here is going to be closer to the water where I'll be working in just um, just a little while. But this interchange, I didn't really want it to be something too major. It was going to be generally pretty small and uh, the road that connects up to it is only a one lane uh, highway that will probably only serve mostly uh, industry that is going around here and some other like walking trails and other things like that which I'm going to leave for an entirely other episode so this is going to be just me putting down the bare basics for this area and then um then yeah I'll go into you know that sort of stuff maybe later and I actually reckon that I'm gonna save a lot of the detail work and the road connections and um, all that the fine-tuning stuff you know the detail stuff that's gonna go around all these mountains I'm probably gonna leave a lot of that for the live streams that I plan to do probably like in a month or I say a month now where I'm, I'm probably recording this episode like three four weeks before it's on YouTube but I do plan to do that pretty shortly 
I'm basically banking on my internet being sorted within the next couple of weeks. I've been saying that for a while. It has been an absolute nightmare to get installed. So I reckon that a lot of this stuff will be probably best worked on when I'm doing the live stream because then you guys can tell me directly what you think I should be doing and um, I think it'll be probably more interesting to do in a style like that rather than in a time lapse. And again, I am taking so much ideas from this general area. There are so many really interesting locations around here in terms of uh, the road layouts and the hillsides and also a lot of the farms that are around um, San Francisco going into the desert. Um, I don't really know the name of the desert, but this whole area I think of San Francisco is really interesting. Uh, a lot of these small little towns are all connected up through pretty much this network of farms and uh, this couple of train lines that are also going through here too. It's actually quite a green area considering how dry California is and then it is going into the desert too. So I mean, it's such a bizarre landscape for me looking at it because in Australia, you know, we have huge amounts of desert. But, um, you know, getting into the desert part takes a long time, you know, sitting on the coast, especially around um, Sydney and New South Wales. It is, um, you know, quite a temperate and quite like a wet environment. And it takes a while to get into the deserts from New South Wales in particular around the coastline. However, like looking at California, I think these mountains have a lot to play on uh, the types of environments that um, is around here. And I think that's what works really well for Marble Mountain is um, we do have quite a lot of space that is uh, dedicated to desert a lot of dry areas but then also this coastline is quite temperate and is, is actually quite a wet area um, and then these mountains I think have a lot to play on you know the way that this landscape is shaped and can, can really justify having a desert so close to um, the coastline and so close to areas that are a little bit lusher as well because you know we've got, we've got this pine forest as well that I'm going to get into too and yeah, I think that the mountains can actually really justify, you know, that sort of work. So you can probably see that all around here, we are looking at a, a lot more drier earth, um, but I am also working on quite foresty areas too. So this particular location is a real mix of those types of environments and the hillsides as well are very, very dry. So I'm putting a whole lot less trees around there, but around these uh, valleys, which is where this highway is as well. Um, I'm trying to keep that quite green because um, I did want there to be a mixture of different environments within certain locations. So this is like a great spot where we are getting a real mix of uh, deserts creeping into the more temperate environments of the coastline. So I'm trying to keep the valleys quite lush with a lot of trees and then the ridges of the mountains just a little bit drier than other areas. And um, this area in particular, way more drier than what we're noticing around Montana. And I've actually made the highway split up a little bit. So either directions on either side of the ridge. I've done that copying the one in San Francisco. I'm pretty sure they're doing this because there is a, a river that runs in between the two and they didn't want to disrupt the natural flow of it so I thought that was quite a cool little element and I thought I'd take a bit of an idea from that and uh, have the middle section into a um, like a river but you know obviously working in city skylines you can't really create small bodies of water you can only really make giant lakes or um, seas and the water flow is just a little bit too strong to make those little tiny creeks there are some really nice looking uh, networks on the workshop, like Ronix has released a few of them and there are also some decals that you can use that make really nice looking creeks and rivers. I didn't really want to download anything extra, I'm trying to keep my assets from the workshop very very low. So I ended up just using one of the footpaths, I think it's from the National Park, um, the Parks District um, from the Park Life D DLC. And that works pretty nicely because it's got a bit of a mossy look as well, as well as um, that dirt path. And I thought that this could be a pretty dry looking river and maybe is only generally flowing when uh, there's a, a huge amount of rain or there might be some snow on Marble Mountain. So it's a pretty dry looking river and it's not perfect, but I use a lot of the trees just to, you know, 
paint a little bit of a um, more greener environment around there and that works really nicely because generally rivers do have a lot of uh, foliage and trees around it even if they are quite a dry area too and I guess what I want this general area to look like is um, you know what is generally a biggish sort of town that's going to sit in this general location and then I plan to have a bit of a sprawl of farms and little suburbs and probably some industry that's also going to sit on the outskirt of Montana and like lots of roads that are going to be connected and you know tied into other locations too and there's also this train line which I'm you know at the moment I'm just dragging one single line but I think it might add an extra line so it's a bit wider so that it can also hold um, you know also warrant having some passenger trains because that's going to be connecting up a lot of these areas and also a line for dedicated just for freight that's my general idea and this interchange as well just slapping it down it's not really um, not detailed I haven't done anything to it yet it's just trying to get the general shape of it and figure out where I want things to go and it actually looks a little bit strange because there is this um, much larger section that goes off into well, connects up another um, highway to this highway that we have at the moment and then there's also this smaller little interchange where it connects up to a street which you know might be a little bit impractical but I'm trying to keep things a little bit realistic by making it look like maybe this little interchange with the street was there first and this bigger one is maybe a more recent addition but I'm gonna leave all that info until the next episode because we are finished with this one if you've enjoyed this video then leaving some feedback in the comment section or by leaving a like would help me out a whole bunch so thanks for doing that um, I'm also on Twitter Instagram and I've also got a discord too where I have a bunch of competitions running and you should go and check them out because they're quite a lot of fun but until next time, have a great week and I'll see you in the next one. See you later.